Hey guys, it's Shelby, and today we're going to be doing one of the classic Shelbizzle favorites, an anti-haul. So the way these videos go is typically I will write down some things that I personally want to anti-haul that I have seen throughout the last month that's super wasteful and kind of pisses me off and I can rant about. And then I will also ask you guys on Instagram some things that you've seen over the past month that are really wasteful that you cannot stand. And then I'll sit down here and I will talk about them. I'll sometimes give alternatives, but mostly this is just to bring awareness to how wasteful these things are that maybe you haven't thought about before or maybe someone who is new to the sustainable lifestyle will realize that there's a lot about waste other than just like plastic straws and bags. We're gonna get right into it after I give a huge thank you to Squarespace for partnering with me on this video. Their help during this weird time in the world has been wonderful, so thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you guys need a website, online store, or even if you just need a domain, check the link in the description. It'll give you a little discount. Okay, here we go. I got some good ones from you guys over on Instagram, so let's just pop that up real quick. First up, we have one from 24 Hours of Random, which says, fireworks. Plain, simple, thank you. <laughs> All I can think of when I think about people who spend money on fireworks is literally lighting money on fire and throwing it into the air. I don't understand why anyone would wanna pay for things to explode in the air. It that part of fireworks makes no sense to me at all. And if you'll notice, sometimes when I talk about why something is bad, I will start with the financial reasons, and that is because most people in my life care more about their finances than they do the planet, so I always try to put that little like sprinkle of things on there. But other reasons why I hate fireworks are, number one, imagine being an animal that lives outside, and then one day, all of a sudden, just explosions fucking everywhere. You don't know why, you don't know where the next one's gonna come from, you don't know where it's gonna land, but things are just fucking exploding around you. I mean, just imagine that happening. Animals die in such huge numbers on days like New Year's Eve, 4th of July. Animals are scurrying, freaking out, trying to get away from these things. They end up getting hit by cars. I mean, and while it's really unfortunate that animals die because of the fireworks and like the celebration, it's also just sad in general to think about animals who are literally terrified and have nowhere to go and don't even know what's going on. There are also issues with people who have PTSD. If their neighbors are fucking exploding, like using explosives outside their house, like I feel so bad for people for those reasons and then the environmental reasons include you're literally putting metals into the air combusting them letting them fall back down to the ground and then where do you think they go guys I just cannot understand the mentality of putting trash into the air also the gases and the powders into the air and then things that do make it back down onto the ground they go straight into the water system or animals accidentally eat them I just, the amount of fucked up that fireworks are is immeasurable they're just awful so um, if you've never thought about fireworks in that way before fucking don't buy them I don't understand the appeal of them so we're gonna anti-haul fireworks. <laughs> also fuck the 4th of July because not all Americans were free on that day, okay, thank you. So this next one I think is really interesting. It comes from Mary Simmons Drummond. She says, artwork sold in big box stores, make something instead, look local or look at Etsy if able. Yeah, this is something I've thought about before. Uh, you know, there are so many artists out there like struggling to make it who are putting their all into their artwork and then there are big box stores like TJ Maxx, Target, Ross, Walmart, like every, every big box store in the world, selling art like it's going out of style. I really like to buy artwork when I travel from local artisans. That's something I personally really like to do. You can do that where you live. I also just think that like the customization or like something being not just a piece you bought generically at a store, there's something to be said about that piece being special and that like not everyone has seen it before because it was done by a local artist or like someone on Etsy. So yeah, I don't know if I would anti-haul artwork in big box stores in all cases. I'm sure there's some case that someone in the comments is gonna tell me why it's not wrong to do that but I just think always looking to support a local artist or a small artist or buying something secondhand or like she said making something yourself is definitely a better option and I thought this was a good opportunity to talk about that look at me going off about fireworks and then trying to be chill about the artwork look I'm not trying to scream at you the whole time except this next one really pisses me off Bryn ACB says products made with prison labor there's a lot to say on this topic, um, and I've known about it for a long time. It's become more of a topic of discussion um, as the Black Lives Matter movement was really being very, very vocal the last few months, which is amazing. But I've known about it for a long time because I read once in an article like a long time ago that Victoria's Secret was able to use prison labor. I learned about this so long ago that at the time I was thinking, 
why does that matter? Like, why are people upset about that? People are in prison anyway, so what's wrong with making them do labor? Let me just say that if you're someone who thinks that way, I, under I understand where you're coming from, right? Someone did a crime, they fucked up, they don't deserve their freedom, let them work. But number one, our prison system is fucked. We have, in the US specifically, we have a for-profit prison system. Most of the prisons are that set up that way, and it incentivizes the police force to put more people in prisons to make more money. Allowing prisons to use labor to give to multi-billion dollar corporations, you guys, by the way, like these are not small businesses or anything that's a sustainable business that's using prison labor. It's places like L'Oreal and Victoria's Secret. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some link below of other companies to look out for that use prison labor. Just the fact that like multi-billion dollar businesses get to use slave labor in our prisons, they're not even getting paid fair wages at all, is fucked up. And then to think about the fact that that incentivizes more people being put into the prison system is beyond fucked up. Like just beyond fucked up. It's definitely not like on the back of the product you're buying. Like if you walk into Walmart, pick up a bottle of L'Oreal shampoo, it's definitely not gonna say on the back of it, made by prison labor. Absolutely, fucking 100% anti-haul anything that's made from prison labor. That is just beyond, beyond fucked up. I can't, I can't believe, yeah, step one is definitely to boycott those companies who do that, which is why they're part of this anti-haul. And thank you so much. What was your name? I've, Bryn, I believe. Bryn. Thank you so much for bringing that up because I... I personally want to talk about it more. I'm going to talk about this on my secret newsletter coming up this week. I'll, I'll have it linked in the description. I used to be a very angry, not only environmentalist, but also social justice warrior. And sometimes when topics like this get brought up, it reignites that like angry fucking just enraged person that can't believe these social injustices are happening in this day and age. I'll leave an article in the description of companies that do use prison labor in the US. There are also companies that you should just boycott for plenty of other ethical and environmental reasons reasons, but yeah, just, let's just move on. Okay. <laughs> so this next one comes to us from Anna or Anna and she says plastic cups for rinsing. I think she meant to say rinsing, rinsing mouth after brushing teeth, use a glass cup or a shot glass instead. Okay. So when I read this, I was like, do people really do that? Do people really use single, like single use cups to rinse their mouth out at night? I, I was thinking that probably not that many people do it. Let me know in the comments if you know anyone who uses single use cups to rinse out their mouth after they brush their teeth. But I had a roommate in college who did it and I have uh, my cousin who is a dental hygienist. Her daughter does it. So what I like to do <laughs> is wet my toothbrush, like get all the toothpaste off. And then I like rebrush my teeth a little bit with just the water and it gets everything out. Just, just Shelby things. <laughs> But yeah, absolutely. Like if you're if you're doing that, definitely just a reusable cup. It's very simple. I feel like probably the people who are watching this video don't do those things, but maybe we can tell our friends and family. Fingers crossed. I don't have a lot of luck convincing my friends and family to do absolutely any fucking thing. Single use cups to rinse out your mouth. I just Please don't do that. Our next one comes from Nicole and she says, needing to have a mask to match every outfit. Are people really doing this? Like in 2020, people are actually buying a mask to match every outfit. I mean, maybe if you have like a black and white one. No, but seriously, I mean, this is obviously really wasteful, but what's even more wasteful is people are using single use masks right now. So maybe if you have like a handful of masks to match all of your outfits, I'm not that mad at you. But if you're constantly just buying new masks, to wear with different outfits. Like, first of all, stay the fuck home and then you won't have to wear masks as often. Not people who are working, please, not people who are working. But if you're going out for the fucking fun of it, if you're changing your outfit all the time so that you're changing your mask all the time, you're going out for a reason that maybe you could just stay home. Obviously it requires resources to create everything that we buy, including those face masks. They had to be grown, they had to be manufactured, or if it's made of petroleum, it had to be mined. It takes a lot of energy and resources to get that item to you. So buying and consuming more than you need to is simply unsustainable. This is a concept I talk about all the time with eco-minimalism, essentially buying as little as you need to have the smallest impact on the environment that you can. So yeah, definitely don't do that. I recently posted a video about how I personally quit fast fashion and this whole mask matching your outfit thing reminds me of that, so I'll link it right here because I used to never repeat an outfit and I definitely think that 16 year old Shelby would have been one of those people to wear a different mask with every outfit. And then this other one from Sonia is about a different type of mask, but it is a mask for every part of your body, which let me just read to you some of the ones that she's saying and then uh, she left one out that I've seen. There are masks for every part of your body, hands, feet, elbows, armpits, butt. Obviously there are masks for your face and we're not talking about this kind of face mask, we're talking about 
this kind of face mask, uh, like a skincare kind of face mask now. Um, but aside from your face, feet, elbow, hands, and armpit, and your butt, there are also ones for your chest. Why are there masks for every part of your body? Let me give you the answer. Marketing. In all reality, use the serum you use on your face, put on like a cloth over it to let it seep in more. I don't know why you would want a mask for your butt. My elbows could definitely use some intense hydration lotion, but I don't think they need a mask, a separate marketed product item, just so you spend more money. That's essentially what it is. So I personally definitely would anti-haul those and recommend avoiding them at all costs. I do wanna say thank you so much to everyone who submitted their anti-hauls. If you're not already following me on Instagram so you can be a part of the next one, make sure you go do that. And like I said, this video is brought to you by Squarespace, so let's talk a little bit more about them. Like I said, Squarespace Space is an all-in-one platform, so you can look to them to build an online store, website, or even just if you need to purchase a domain. Squarespace makes setting up a website super easy because you don't need to learn coding. They already have some beautiful templates over there that you can customize to be exactly what you're looking for. Squarespace makes it easy to connect your social media and to also take advantage of their blogging tools. You can do email campaigns through Squarespace because it is an all-in-one platform, like I mentioned. With their 24-hour customer service and traffic insight tools, it makes it the the easiest way to build a website on the internet today. So when you're ready to launch, head over to squarespace.com shellbizzle for 10% off of your first purchase.